Hello, hello. It is Becca with a bottle. We are drinking. We are continuing from our part one, part two of us, um, our experience of giving birth to our son and the hospital trips and all that stuff. We are drinking the Livingston Cellar Chablis Blanc. Say it with an accent, girl. Damn. No, I'm not Chablis even trying. Say it, pronounce it right. I don't think we're both pronouncing it right, so we're just gonna leave that alone. We're just gonna. I'm putting the effort in. You say she be blonde, she be blonde. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone because I know when I can, when I'm defeated. So, um, we were we left off at the celebration steak meal. Um, I wish I could show you guys the picture because the steak, the food was amazing. They gave us some vegetables. I think it was like, okay, all I know is it was like steak, potatoes vegetables with a strawberry cheesecake and ice cream ice cream with a soda and um sprite um we had a nurse watch our son well you she was doing I was yeah they gave me a lot of I I I thought this was like normal cuz I did see flowers in my room. I thought it was like my family or my friends bringing me flowers. It was the nurses that was bringing me flowers. So I kind of chalked it up like, okay, maybe they give it to every new mom. Because I was like, I was the first one out of. So there was three moms. There was two moms before me. Then I came third. And then there was a fourth mom. But the thing is, all three. The first two and the last one were dilated further than me. But I guess my kid cheated and did an emergency C-section. So I was the first mom of the day that gave birth. The other three were still in labor. Our son didn't want to wait any longer. He said, take me out. He sure did. Because because remember, the first one, we heard her from our room and she was down the hall. So, um, the meal was amazing. It was that good. Like, I kid you not, if they cooked like that, I would have stayed, probably stayed, lived in the hospital. But the celebration steak was amazing. I guess you could think of it like it was our version of a date night. And <laughs> like, hey, welcome to parenthood. Um, I didn't like the tests they ran on our child, especially when they had to prick his feet. Like, it broke my heart. Um, Vitals was not my friend. I don't care what you guys say. These nurses what came in. It was pricking. Yeah, it was his feet. They pricked his feet. And um, because I felt like they was waking me up every hour for Vitals for me and Logan. It was and it, three hours. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. They woke us up every three hours, but to me, it felt like they woke me up every hour. And then remember, I had to, I had to breastfeed our child. And after I breastfed him, they wanted me to pump for any leftover milk. So, um, but um, I was more eager to leave because I'm not a fan of hospitals. But you know, when you have a kid. But other than that, um, our son was small. Even though they said five pounds was average, he was a little, little jelly bean. Like, he literally fit our hand. That's how small he was. He was small. Yeah. Like, the clothes we brought for him was too big. Even though it said newborn. Um, What else? Um, <laughs> um, uh, Okay, so yes. When my legs was numb, I had to... It was interesting because I was working out even though my body wasn't moving. I had to try to bring movement to my legs. Then when I did, I was stubborn. They told me to take my time. They told me to use the help of my husband. And when I wanted to do my first full shower, because um, I'm going to tell you guys. When they bathed me, it was disturbing. I don't know about you, but let me tell you what I thought when they bathed me. Remember when they first bathed me and they wiped me down? You don't remember? Uh-uh. You probably fell asleep. So I remember they. Well, I wasn't there. Yeah, you was in the room. I mean, yeah, I was in the room, but I wasn't. 
I didn't see what was happening. Okay, so there was three nurses. They came in. It was like, we got to bathe you. So I thought what they meant was they're going to lift me up, take me to the bathroom, <laughs> put me in some kind of chair, oh, and spray water, so whatever. Wrong. On that bed, they lift my, they spread my legs open, spread eagle. I had one nurse on my right, one nurse on my left, one nurse in front of me. They spread my legs open and they had, they, remember that foam soap they told me I could only bathe with for that region down yeah. there? Yeah, they just kept ch -ch 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 spritzing that in there. And all I saw was just towels. They kept using towels and the towels were red. And I was like, oh my gosh, am I blood clotting? Am I bleeding badly? Am I going to die? Like, but they was like, no, this is the um, fluids for afterbirth. This is your afterbirth fluids or whatever. And I'm sitting here like, but what was disturbing to me was, um, you guys just spread my legs open like it was not a problem. Like, this is normal. Like, I guess this is normal to you, but as a new mom, I'm like, the only person that spread my legs like this was my husband, and that's how we got our son. Well, I guess that's where they're going with it. No. And it shouldn't be a problem where you, where you spread it open. They spread but... my legs open. They wipe me down. They clean me. What I didn't like was... um. They had to move me to take the pad out to put a new pad. Like before I could walk. Remember how they had to keep changing pads? I hated that. And then they had to keep like wiping. Like, you know how weird it is to have someone wipe my ass <laughs> that is not your mother. Oh. And you know, I don't have a small butt. So. Oh for them to be like, I have one nurse holding me and another nurse spread my, my cheeks, cheeks, wipes my butt. And I was yeah, like, let me get in there. no, <laughs> I felt so weird. And I was like, only my mom does this. Like, I don't know. It was like, no, we have to make sure you're clean. Cause if you're not clean, you could get an infection. I was like, ah, okay. So cool. Fast forward. Um, I think a couple hours later, it was all in the same day. I was able, because they say normally the next day, the mom can move her legs. I was able to move my legs. I was stubborn. My husband was sleeping. So I was like, okay, while my husband and my son was sleeping, I was going to go shower. I got up, then I got back down because I couldn't support myself standing. And my husband heard the plop sound of me falling back down to the bed. And he was like, babe, the nurse says you're supposed to use me when you need to shower. And I was being stubborn because I thought they were just like over exaggerating. No, even if you are able to move your legs, you can't, you're not fully healed. So I had to walk like, uh, I had to walk slow with my husband and my husband had to bathe me. Yep. Bathe you. I bathed you for like three days. Yeah, all two, two and a half. Two and a half. Was three days. I bathed you for three days. <clears throat> uh, um, it wasn't know, bad. It was just going through the process of bathing you. I was like, mm. you know, you I don't, I don't see myself doing this for anybody else. You know, I'm glad it's with you. And nobody else. Uh -huh. I guess I, I, I don't think I would do this for anybody. I guess it's just like when you're in the moment and such. Like, I'll be honest with you. I never, besides my mom, I never thought of anybody taking care of me. Yeah. But that's... then when you bathed me and it was like, I felt awkward. But then I was like, hey, I'm not at my fullest. I need help. And you were there. Yeah, that's what I was, I was trying to get you to, you know, realize that, I understand that, that I'm here to help you f for whatever you need, whatever you want. <clears throat> and I guess that was the part, because and it's like... You, you feeling like, oh, I guess you don't really need my help and stuff like that. I didn't want to feel useless. Yeah, you want to feel useless. You want to feel like you can, you can do yourself. You want to feel like you're trying. But, like, until you can move really... Move your legs and have balance on your full feet. Control, yeah, full yeah. control. 
you can't really do anything because you will probably fall right back down to the floor or hurt something. myself. Hurt yourself. Oh, not guys, it was not a joke. He was literally holding me, bathing me, and everything. Yeah, bathing. It me. was awkward, like even like lotioning so me. It was awkward to me. It, it wasn't awkward to me. It wasn't, but I guess it's like you know when it's your first time and you realize like yo, you really can't take care of yourself. You need assistant and such. <laughs> Why am I thinking down the line like when we like fifty, nah. sixty? Yeah, right? well, probably. But who knows? <laughs> um, but no, that's when I realized like, okay, I need my husband, but I wanted my, I wanted my husband to focus on our son because I wanted to make sure our son had enough, a lot of skin to skin. Any opportunity, hey, skin to skin. But you know, our our child was in the incubator. And my husband, it was it's interesting because not only did he bathe me. He walked me back to the bed. He made sure I dried down, lotion me and such. Make sure I was dressed properly. I would not wear the gowns. You could ask my husband. No matter how many times he tells me, I refuse to wear the gowns. I wore the gowns that I brought. I didn't wear none of the hospital gowns. Um, But after I was able to move around and do stuff on my own, and then, you know, in due time, we was able to bring our baby home. But that was still working itself because I couldn't move as fast as I could. So there was times that I needed help with him taking me places or, like, just in the house. Like, if I needed to go to the bedroom, I mostly hung out in the living room. Because it's like being a workers' comp where, you know, you can do, do a lot when of When you're things. injured. Yeah, yeah injured. but... It wasn't like an injury, but yeah, I was like in a way unable. To, I wasn't useful in the house. Yeah, you couldn't lift anything. I couldn't lift anything. I couldn't move anything. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do anything. Um, I was happy of. Um, I think they said the the most you could lift was a plate. Yeah, and in our child. Yeah, our child, and then that was it. I was help. I was glad that you know, uh, my best friend Jennifer came through. Her mom came through. Our family came through. Our family? Okay, my family family. came through and such. It was just, it kind of sucked because I wanted to stay in our bedroom, but our bedroom doesn't have a TV. So I was mostly in the living room and such. My first night, I could not sleep. I didn't sleep. My husband slept because he was able to put Logan down and he swaddled him. Like I I was impressed with your swaddling skills that night, but I couldn't sleep. <laughs> but um, for real, you guys, when we got home from the hospital, I couldn't move a lot. So the only time I moved was when my husband was home. So I had to make sure like I was at a spot. I know I could spend long term what at because after his two weeks, he he went back to work. But um, other than that, um, we was taken care of by my family and my best friend. Um, yeah, we was good. Oh yeah, some of the people at work helped out too, like gift cards and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. some of the people at our job, um, helped out. So that was the experience and such. And I'll be honest with you, I will do it again. I'll just jump to the c-section part not wait 12 hours <laughs> yeah. so this is some, our some things in life you, you can't rush no you're right logan wasn't rushing and such but um this is what we will share um Damn, baby. yeah <laughs> but um the reason for our c-section was our son he was in a downward position, but the angle he was at, he was stuck in the birthing before the birthing canal. So they had to get him out and his heart rate had um, decreased in a way that they said, Hey, let's grab him out. So that's what happened. And this is our story to share. So let's move on to a topic what would you like to move on to giddy i would like to move on to parents p 
parents, parents, parents. Basically, you know, I think I would like to talk about. Okay, let's a, talk a about si- a situation of mine. Well, not necessarily. I'm not gonna go into deep on the situation, but basically, my parent. You know, my mom was alive right now. I don't have my dad. Was uh, was passed, but my mom. I so was, what uh, he's saying is his mom is alive. His father had passed. Um, for me, my parents are divorced. My mom, I'm not going to dig into it, but my mom is just not there mentally. My father is well. He's just in his own world. And that's how we're going to leave it at. But this is um, Gibson's story. So. Word. All, right. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so boom. My mom... <clears throat> you know, I love my mom. I love my mom with all my heart. And nothing will ever break that f- from us. You know, I know she loves us. I know she loves me with all her heart, all of her nine kids. You know, I don't think she would have all nine of us and not love, you know, one of us out of Surprise. more than other. I know, you know, there would be different type of loves and stuff like not different type of love, but like different levels loving one more than the other mm-hmm. and stuff like that but she would show the same appreciation same love same effort to all of us it's just you know getting to the nitty gritty I feel like one thing that my mom did during a situation that me and my wife uh, had happened to us was, you know, she was she wasn't understanding. She was my mom wasn't understanding. She wasn't she wasn't trying to listen listen to any of my 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 reasonings as to why. As to why I did what I did, as to why things happened the way it happened, you know? So we're not going to share too much of it, but... we're uh, not going to share too much of the details of what happened, but we just want you to, I guess we just want you to listen to our, to my part of why, you know, we talk about parenting and we feel like if you're going to be a parent, you should be a... Great understanding parent. You shouldn't choose sides. No matter how many kids you have or not, you know, you shouldn't choose sides. You should be all you you should be understanding to all. So where I was trying to get at is an incident happened involving a family member family member and our child that has caused some ripple effects or as we'll say, just a ripple in the pond. And um now this is um Gibby's side my husband's side of what happened <clears throat> with his, him and his family. I just want everybody to know that you know as a parent you should understand your kids. You know, you should be there for them also. Not saying that my parent, my mom ain't. It's just that out of nine kids, you know, the situation that happened, you know, the last one was the was the baby of all the nine kids, and she chose to stick to the side of the baby of that family of you know our family you know she chose that side instead of being, you know choosing my side which you know I'm older than that older you know and I don't just say you know I, I don't just say stupid things out of my mouth just to say it I'm more reasonable I'm more reasonable I'm more wiser I know what I got going on for myself I'm married you know I think logic before I even say things. So I would think she would understand 
come you know come to understand and where I'm coming from. But she didn't, you know. It was just a a battle between me and my mom. Nothing that not necessarily a battle, but I feel like it was just a oh. You don't want to choose my side. Oh, cool. That's it. That's how you feel. We done talking. We don't gotta talk about anything anymore because you say what you had to say, and of course you're not gonna listen to what I gotta say. So that that's what that's what it was. But I think, like as a mom, I'm not saying I'm sorry with her, so don't cut my head off. But she felt like you know. This is her child, the baby of her child. So she had to protect her child, which there's nothing wrong with that. But due to of what due to what was ha- what had happened, how she picked sides was wrong from our point of view as parents. Uh-huh. You know, it's not wrong. Choosing the baby side or defending your baby. It's not about it's not wrong. I'm not yeah. You gotta know when to when to defend and when not to defend. Because that's like saying we'll defend Logan. So if he commit murder, we're still defending him, even though we know he is guilty of murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, hey, you know, yeah, we'll defend our son, but if he commit a crime, if he com- if he does something wrong. You have to know, like, all right, as parents, you got to correct that. And, again, this is my point of view. This is not your point of view. I felt like, yes, I felt like your mom did not correct the baby of what she did wrong. Well, nobody really corrected it. Nobody was there, you know, telling her that she was wrong, telling her, oh, she shouldn't have done this. Nobody was, nobody was there telling her those things, you know. I think it, maybe it, some did and just didn't tell you. I don't know maybe some did, maybe because. I know I'm one guessing, sibling I'm, said that. I I had brought it up one time when I spoke to you know the fam my family chat and I brought it up where I said that nobody's telling her, you know she doing wrong, nobody's telling her right from wrong, et cetera, et cetera. Nobody's telling her that she shouldn't do what she had done. Nobody, Nobody's correcting the actions, you know. Nobody's again giving her the right choices to make because she's a baby. And I don't know if she's really talking to anybody else like that, but out of six sisters, and I'm I'm not blaming my sisters. Out of six sisters who, you know, way older than her because, of course, she's a baby. I would expect more from them to let her know, yo, your actions is wrong. Hold up. I'm sorry for interrupting, but let's let everybody know that all nine of the kids are over the age of 18. Yeah. Because you don't want them to... You're yeah, that, saying the baby. You that's also... That's, that's, I was about to lead on to that also. This person that I'm, talk, that I'm mentioning, that incident happened, she is over the age of 18. She just turned 21, you know, soon, I mean, a while ago. She just turned 21 a while ago. I'm not going go exactly into the details of what day and what year and whatnot, but she just turned 21 a while ago, so she's a full grown-up. She's an adult right now. So everybody in my family, all nine of us are adults. All, all nine of us can make our choices and stuff like that, because speaking for ourselves, all nine of us are grown-ups. So they shouldn't there shouldn't be no defending, no saying, oh, I'm the baby. I get to do this. I get to do that. There should be none of that. As a parent, you have the right to defend whoever you want to defend. But still, you should also, you know, come to a conclusion, come to agreement, you know, realize who did wrong and who did who who did right. 
You shouldn't be just choosing one side and not listening to the other side. And you shouldn't you shouldn't make the other side feel left out. Because I felt like my mom made me feel like I was left out. Trying to talk to her, trying to reason with her, trying to get un- to trying to get her to understand me. It was a struggle. You know, I basically felt like I had to almost come to a altercation with my mom on the phone where I was like saying some some things I didn't mean to get her to understand me. Saying some words that I didn't want to say to get her to understand me. You see, she was so quick on defending that person then defending me, which is the grown up. I'm the, the grown up here. But you know, we're going to my mom's side where she's born and raised in the islands. You know, her her history is the same way. She I guess she gonna she gonna raise her kids the same way. She gonna teach them the same way. So I came to the conclusion of her stuck in her island beliefs. To as to where that's why she's defending that person, and she see that I'm the I'm I'm the person doing wrong, and she shouldn't talk to me, or she shouldn't be my mom. You know, she she shouldn't pretend to be my mom anymore. But I just feel like that was I just feel like that was wrong. But I still try to talk to my mom to this day. I originally didn't really want to talk to her. But now I'm talking to a therapist and the therapist say, you know, it's good for my kids to get in contact with, you know, their grandparents. It's good for me to also let it out and have a a discussion with her. So I'm trying to talk to her more and more so we can you know i guess hash whatever we got going on out i don't feel like it's anything ill between us because she, i know she's my mom she's my parent i don't think she have no ill thoughts okay. intents about me or going on in her head i just feel like whatever happened didn't necessarily had to happen, you know. Things could have been resolved that day if we had talked it out. But it's also it's it's always one one sided. The story or the situation is always one sided. So you feel like because the individual was the baby of all of you guys that she felt like regardless of what the situation was, she had to come to the rescue of the baby. Yes, that's what I feel like. I feel like she had to come to the rescue of the baby because she's the fuck, she's the baby. They didn't come to my rescue when I needed her, you know? Even though I never really needed a rescue, but she didn't come to my rescue. I have a grown-up I think I get what you mean, where it's like that moment where you need your mom to really have your back. She didn't have your back at that time. Yes, that's what I was looking for. Like, it was, if it was my dad, my dad would have been there. My dad would have, you know, can't not come to me physically. Right now, but f- yeah, physically, he would have been there. He was like, no, no, this, no, that. He would have told me right from wrong. He would have told that person right from wrong. He would have he would have done all that. So you think that due to probably how she grew up island what like her island upbringing, she felt like, hey, let me defend the person that might be the weakest link, even though this event this individual is over the age of eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah, I'm also feeling like she felt like that person couldn't speak. I don't know, really speak up for herself, 
for herself, even though she did physically. I just feel like maybe she had the upper voice for that person. She wanted to make sure that that person is heard. There's nothing wrong. Like, I am a mother, even though, you know, I have a couple of months into this. But it's like, you know, you want to protect your children, defend your children. But I feel like how my mother would have done it is, hey, once your kids are grown, my mom would have been like, figure it out. Exactly. When you're under 18, she'll probably intervene like a referee. But when you once you're over 18, she'll be like, hey, figure it out. Yeah, that's what I would mo- I t- expect my mom to say, hey, figure it out. You know, whatever's going, going on between you and this person don't really need to happen. But you, you two got to figure it out. I'm not going to tell you what, I'm not going to tell you guys what to do, but you guys need to figure it out. Now, ASAP, as soon as possible, don't make me come down here to where you guys at and, you know, we'll be with a belt, something like that, throwing us. I would expect that, but no, I didn't get that. I got, oh, you need to stop treating your, your sister this way or else you ain't going to have a mother or whatnot on your side. How do you feel about your mother saying something like that? Like it's either, cause this is how I'm grasping it. She's basically saying either defend this person or you will no longer have a mother. How do you feel about that? I feel hurt about that. I feel like my mother, my mother shouldn't have said what she said. She shouldn't have made it that way. You know, it shouldn't have been that way at all. For her to say that is is very disappointing as a mother and the only parent that we all have, you know. All our dads has passed away. My mom has nine kids and all all of our dads has passed away. She's the only parent we all have. So she should be the, you know, the person we all look look up to she should be the person we all look up to look look forward to seeing look forward to meeting to have her around having fun with enjoying the time with you know because she's she's our parent you know she's our child's grandmother our child's ah wanting my child to be around you because you're not going to defend him if if that if situation was to have to happen if it happens to him, you're not going to defend him. You're going to let somebody walk over, walk over him, and feel like it's okay, which I don't want. I don't want to happen. If you're not going to defend me, what makes me think you're going to defend my son? You know, being his grand grandmother, what makes you think you're going to defend my son? What makes you think you're going to defend my next child? What makes you? What makes me think you're going to defend anybody else else's child? I feel like to each their own, where it's like, you know, I have my moments where I don't fully trust my child alone with my father, and that's just personal reasonings and such based on how I grew up and how my father treated me. So it's like everybody's different and such, but as a mom, I feel like, hey, your kids will always need you. It's a 24-hour job. Once you become a mom, this is my opinion. Everybody's different. But once you become a mom, it's a 24-hour job until you die. And I remember I told somebody, like, with my firstborn child, I feel like I'm still going to keep learning new stuff until I die or maybe he passed. Because it's like, you know, you're, with your first child, you're always learning something. You know, even if they're 18, 30 50 years old, you're always still learning something from your firstborn, so you know what to do with the rest of your children. It's not even, you know, when you said when you be, when you become a mom, it's when you become a parent. You know, parent should be the key word there. Once you become a parent, it's on you to do whatever it takes to make your child happy, keep your child happy. It it should be on you to do whatever it takes to provide and keep going for your child because you don't 
he shouts to see that you quit or give up or you know just not doing anything for for him or her. Well, I get that, but you gotta be careful when you're saying like make your child happy because you don't want to spoil your kid too. Yeah, yeah. But you know, too much spoiling is not good. We all get that, but you know, I didn't really get much spoiling. I don't feel like I got enough spoiling. I wasn't trying to be spoiled, but you know, I think you just feel like hey, you just want. As much lo- motherly love as the rest of your siblings got. And that's understandable. But there's no manual on how to be parents, how to raise your kids, how to make sure they have a successful, wonderful life. All you could do is just follow, do the guidelines you think is best for your kid and see where life takes them there. Yeah, that's what you should do, you know. I feel like I want my mom to understand that she's the only parent that we have. She's the only one we have right now, all of us, you know. I want us to realize that if she goes away, she passes away, that we have nobody. Nobody to depend on. So she shouldn't be saying what she said to me at all. She shouldn't be she shouldn't say to anybody else. Nobody in the family. She shouldn't say it to nobody. Like we all of me specifically, I'm trying to still have that connection with her till she passes away. I'm trying to have that connection with her forever. Like I said, not every parent's parent is perfect. You know, you do what you can, and you know, by the end of the day, once they become adults, you see, like, hey, did you raise them right or did you raise them wrong? But you raise them the best you can. True, you raise them the best you can. As for me, you know, I wouldn't say that my mom is the best mom ever, but she's the only mom that I have. And I want to keep that. I want to keep that for my son, and I want to keep that for everybody else in my family. I I know they would like to keep that also. So it's the fact that, you know, she just got to come to her senses and realize that she's missing out on something that's going to be, I don't know, beneficial or something, or supportive. Everybody's different. That's all I can really say there. It's like everybody's different, and you're just going to have to choose to, like, accept it and deal with it or just cut it out, cut it out of your life. Now the question is, are you what you going to do? Are you going to accept and deal with it or remove it out of your your life and your son's life i just i don't want to deal with it i don't want to deal with it because i feel like if i deal with it it's gonna be something that i would have to continue to deal with that's just my choice so that means you're gonna cut her out i don't know if i want to cut her out either cutting her out means cutting her out for good And I still want a relationship, so I feel like I'll have to find a way, like I'm doing now, to work it out, so both of us could come to understanding and talk more often than we do now. That's that's what would happen. And I think that's just, like, part of when you are raised in a Caribbean family or Caribbean household, whether it's two parents or one, like, Sometimes situations make it difficult where it's like, you know, some people deal with it and just be like, you know, fuck it. It is what it is. It's my parent. You know, I won't get a new mom or a new dad. And it's understandable. But in my, I guess off my personal experience, it's like, I'll deal with you to a certain extent. But by the end of the day, when it comes to my child, I feel like if I need to cut you off, whether it's forever or a certain timeline, that's what I'm going to do. And if you don't like it, you know, that's something you're just going to have to deal with. Because by the end of the day, this is my child that I am protecting and defending and making sure that they are well cared for. So this has been Becca with a Bottle. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you to the fullest. 
Thank you guys for listening to my story also. And we will be back with another podcast. But thank you so much for listening to our stories. Like, I guess, give you sight of being, you know, a Caribbean child with how his mother is and him being a father and such. So enjoy. Have a good day, week, night, weekend. However you listening to this, have a wonderful, blessed day. And thank you, you guys. Bye.